Dr. Parvez Ahmed and in this lecture uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, scient inhalation detectors. So like you can see it in the figure, scient inhalation detector has uh, different parts that is the main part consists of a tube uh, which consists of uh, the element that we call uh, dianodes uh, then it has a prism uh, just like you can see it here in the figure and then at the bottom uh, just like you can see it with the with the cursor pointing it uh, that is we have the scintillation screen and then uh, below this we have the mire so uh, what is mean by scintillations so scintillations uh, is a means of detecting uh, the presence of ionizing radiations you know that what is mean by ionizing radiations that is uh, we, uh, by ionizing radiations we mainly uh, uh, say that it's uh, that radiation that produce uh, ionization and the gases just like you can say that uh, alpha particles are beta particles so what actually happened in this kind of the detectors ionization radiations interact with the scintillators the scintillator is normally uh, an element that are a compound. So what happened with this interactions? Uh, uh, so this interaction produces a pulse of light. I mean, we have a scintillation element here, this particular kind of detectors. Uh, sorry, this uh, here, this particular point. So when the radio, uh, uh, okay, uh, we will discuss that on the next slide, sorry. So uh, what actually we have, uh, when the ionizing radiation interact with the scintillators, so it produces a pulse of light. So what happened then? Uh, this light interacts with the photocathode, just like we had here. Initially, we have this initial light. Uh, this has been produced as interactions of uh, ionizing radiations with the scintillators element or compound. So this light interact uh, with the photocathode. You know, the path of cathode uh, what happened with this uh, it results and the productions of electrons so what we have next uh, the electron I mean that is uh, we say uh, that we ha uh, have been produced from the previous interactions is multiplied in a photo multiplier tube that has a series of focused dianodes you see that these are the focus dianode. In the last slide, we will have a mechanism uh, in that we will discuss in full detail that how the things really happen. So, uh, with the increasing potential voltage, uh, uh, it's reserved uh, an electrical signal. So, what we have, just like you can see it here, uh, we mainly have a radiation source, and that radiation source is uh, meant to emit the radiations on a crystal which is normally sodium iodide in this particular uh, type of scintillation detectors that is shown in the figure so uh, these radiation uh, they are being made to fall on this particular crystals uh, so you can see here on the side we have the lead um, the lead shielding and this is basically to prevent the outside environment from the harmful effect of that particular uh, radiations which we want to detect. So here we have the crystals. So uh, when the radiation is fall, when the radiation fall on this particular crystal, so the things start to begin. So what actually we have, uh, the number of count is dependent on the activity and the activity that has been present. I mean, uh, whatever hearing, uh, whatever uh, the thing is happening here. Uh, uh, that we described on the previous slide is first we met the radiation fall in this particular crystal so it's a met an electron that electron is carried to this particular point dianode here we have the secondary lash, uh, the secondary emission of the electrons these electrons they are being met to fall on the dianode uh, where they are being multiplied till we have added number uh, which has been detected by uh, that anode and displayer on the screen. I mean, this is some of the very simple process uh, that one should need to understand. So, what do we have uh, here? The number of the count uh, that has been produced is independent. Uh, sorry, uh, the number of count is dependent 
on the activity that is present. So the energy of the electron, the energy of the electron that has been produced uh, and subsequently uh, the associated current, the number of electron and the associated current is proportion to the incident energy of the ionizing radiations. I mean here we have the ionizing radiations that fall in that particular crystal that is sodium iron. So here we are saying that the energy of the electrons. I mean the, uh, the electron which has been produced as a result of these interactions and consequently the associated current. I mean the current which is produced as a result of that is proportion to the answer uh, to the incident energy of the ionizing radiations. I mean uh, its proportions to the energy that has been carried by uh, this particular uh, radiation. So by analyzing the energy what we need to do here so uh, we're trying to analyze the energy and the corresponding number of the count the nuclide and the activity may be uh, detected. I mean if you want to detect a particular kind of the nuclide that has been and emitted during a particular uh, radioactivity or particular uh, process uh, I mean that uh, we have a radiation emitted from a particular source so what actually we have to do with the help of scientific radiation detectors we are basically analyzing the energy and the corresponding number of the count it enables us to determine uh, the, 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 that particular kind of the activity so uh, there are several types of the scientific radiation detectors. I mean, that detectors that we've been, uh, 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 I mean, depreciated from one another on the basic of the type of the material that we are using as a scintillators. So on this basis, uh, uh, we have the first type in which the scintillatory material has been utilized as uh, sodium iodide. So sodium iodide is basically restricted to the uh, uh, detections of the gamma radiations. The next step we have plastic uh, scintillator. Uh, so this is basically uh, a solution of the fluorescent compound uh, included in the transparent plastic material that we call uh, gan uh, gantry. Uh, the third type is uh, scintillator, uh, the third type of the scintillation detectors, uh, we call that uh, zinc oxide, uh, sorry, zinc sulfide scintillators. Uh, so that particular type is used for the detections of the alpha radiations. I mean, uh, here you can easily uh, differentiate between these detectors that is mostly dependent upon the type of the material that we are utilizing. And based on the type of the material, it is being classified for different radiation style. Uh, we can also have spectral analysis with the help of the scintillation detectors uh, when uh, used uh, with the multi-channel analyzer that we simply short as uh, MCA. So it's provide information on the energy of a proton that had interact, uh, interacted with the detectors uh, as well as with the activity present. So the spectra can be analyzed to determine which, uh, which isotopes are present. Uh, so I mean it's, it's so one of the benefit of the scintillation detectors that we can use it for uh, the spectroscopy analysis that is we can use it to determine different isotopes of the same atoms or the same materials. So uh, it can be a good choice in this particular, uh, in this particular sense that is uh, if you want to uh, have it for the isotopes analysis. So uh, some of the uses of the scintillation detectors are uh, is used in conventional uh, film screen, uh, radiography, uh, many digital uh, radiographic receptors uh, uh, fluoroscopy, scintillation cameras, uh, MOS CT scanners, and PAT scanners. Uh, scintillation detectors uh, consist of a scintillator and a device such as PMT, uh, PMT that convert the light into an electrical signal. Uh, some desirable properties of the scintillators uh, include high convergent efficiency, 
I mean, whenever they are being utilized, it has higher conversion efficiency as compared to the already described uh, detectors. Uh, uh, just like that, uh, we have dead time, so I've been excited instead. I should be short. Um, material trans uh, transparent to its own emissions. So color of the emitted light should match spectral sensitivity of the light receptors. So for X-ray and gamma rays detectors, uh, you should be large, high detection efficiency. I mean, the detection efficiency is, uh, for X-ray and gamma rays is very, uh, very high. So this kind of detector is particularly useful for X-rays and gamma rays. Uh, unaffected by masters uh, and inexpensive to manufacture. I mean, so that's why this kind of detectors that are mostly raj and so uh, you can utilize that uh, in a particular atmosphere where you have the moisture because this kind of detector is unaffected by the moistures and uh, it's inexpensive to manufacture because the material that are being utilized here in this as a uh, 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 i mean radiation elements uh, which used for the detection of different radiations uh, is not that much expensive it's readily available so that's why we are saying that this kind of detectors uh, is inexpensive to manufacturers. So I think there's an error for uh, this particular lectures. Uh, see you in the next lectures. The next lecture we will talk about another type of the uh, radiation detector.